Live from San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at VMworld 2014. Brought to you by VMware, Cisco, EMC, HP, and Nutanix. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to VMworld 2014, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman, and we're here live. This is day three for us. We've been doing wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We set a record in the last two days. I think it was 42 interviews, is that right? 41 interviews in two days. It's a new single cube record. Of course, at EMC World, we had the double cubes going. We, we, set, we broke all records to uh, make Jeremy Burton happy, I guess. But uh, we're here, Stu and I are going to really you know, get into uh, the Federation conversation. <laughs> Dennis Wilford is here. He runs sort of evangelism worldwide for EMC and is really staking a claim on the whole Federation model yeah, and that's messaging. True. So that's Dennis, true. welcome. We were talking last night at the EMC World event, that was, uh, EMC event, it was fantastic. So yeah, no, that was great. It was a good little preview for what we're going to talk about yeah. today. So welcome yeah. to theCUBE. It's great Thank to you, have I appreciate you back. it. Very glad to be here. It's awesome, great show. So we've talked in the past, and we talked a little bit last night about how the, how the whole federation model sort of changes the way in which you guys go to market. It allows you not to just talk to the sort of storage admins. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks of EMC, they think, oh, storage, yeah. right? <laughs> but that's not what you want. So talk about sort of your, your role, your goals, yeah. what you've been charted to do. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So my job, as you pointed out, is to tell a holistic story around all the stuff we do. And you're right, we have a lot of perceptions that are like, the first thing you say, if you say, hey, what do you say, EMC? They say storage, right? But storing data is just a small part of what we do. Yeah. Why is that? Well, because it's infinitely more exciting to do something with the data, right? So to do that, you have to actually crack some packets and look inside. One of the things, of course, that's very important when you are computing on data is that you have a good compute environment. And if you start looking at that, you go, oh, so that's where VMware fits in, right? <laughs> and then you say, you know, what do we do with Pivotal? Well, we're adding more value to the data, right? But you can also imagine, why is that a federation? Good question to ask, right? It's a federation because, of course, the different individual focus needs a different organization. If you're building a storage system, that's one way of, of, of doing stuff, right? If you're building a virtual uh, server environment, that's another. And if you look at, finally, on, the, on one side you say, hey, we're actually going to build applications. Well, that's still another culture, right? You need to have focus in the individual parts of the federation. So that's why, you know, there are all these different design centers for the way people work together. So, in thinking about sort of your traditional approach and go to market and, and the roles to which you, you sell and interact, obviously the storage admin, you know, is a big proponent of your technologies, big, big buyer. Cool. Yeah. But I keep hearing at this show <laughs> that, that that role is going away. The non-differentiated heavy lifting is going away. Um, okay. So, who tells so, you that? So uh, 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 VMware. Folks. VMware. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Essentially, we're making storage invisible. So if you're a, a, a if, put it this way, if you're an infrastructure admin yes. that provisions storage, right. your job is going to get easier. As, re, as a result, you're going to have to move up the value stack. That's right. Spend more time with the business. Absolutely. Um, spend more time maybe talking about cloud brokerage and so forth. So I want you to talk about how the roles within each of those worlds are changing. So storage admin, traditional mm -hmm. for EMC, VMware admin, traditional for, for VMware, and Pivotal is kind of the developer right. community. So that's right. sort of new in that's Greenfield. True. That is true. How are the first two evolving? I think the developer community is pretty clear that you, that's critical for yeah, you guys. Yeah, very critical. Um, Adding and, value and, to the data. And yeah. now with the whole Docker thing, that's yep. extending, yep. Cloud Foundry, fantastic. Yep. So that's pretty solid. But, right. but the other two What's going on there? are really yeah. in transition, and you're driving a lot of that oh, transition. Oh, we are, so absolutely. You, and it's in, intentionally. So where are you taking that bus? Well, they're very simple. So I need to start, so being, being, being the storage guy that I am, right? I need to start there to illustrate what, what we're really talking about. About here. If you're, talk, if you're the, the average storage admin, you're having a big system, could be VMAX, could be VNX, and you have thousands of virtual machines. And what's the one thing we hear from every single place? Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm up to here with, with doing requests from everybody, they want LUNs, they want to spin up. There's more agility now in any business out there than has ever been before. And how do you create agility? Look at the internet, right? It, the internet could never have scaled to the numbers if we weren't empowered to do what we want to do on the internet. So it's all about empowering the people who are actually running the business applications. The way it used to be was, hey, I, I'm going to spin up a VM, I go over and talk to my storage admin, he gives me the LUN I need to work on, and now everybody's happy. Well, that works in smaller numbers, but when you're talking thousands and thousands of VMs that need to be able to spun up at a moment's notice, we need to empower 
the VM administrator. And how would we do that? By provisioning him virtual volumes. And it's really funny, there was actually a lot of internal conversations around that, right? You may know that our storage systems, they would pool the resources that they have, whether it's solid state, mechanical drives, whatever, in a big pool, and we parcel that pool out and say, you get this much, you get this much. That's how what storage admin typically would do. But he still does that. He provides a buffet, if you will, of resources that now the virtual administrator, the VM guy, can come in and say, hey man, I need to spin up a two terabyte LUN for whatever I'm doing here. But he's doing it through the top-down VVOL abstraction. Right. So they're actually coming together, they're just two sides of the same exact uh, equation. But it's, 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 it's demand driven, it's driven by the VM administrator himself, or herself, not by the, hey, we have to get together, have a meeting, figure out how much LUN, how many LUNs and what volumes I need. No, they're, already, they're already there, it's self-service. So I, I feel as though a lot of your, the federations, you know, the individual companies within the federation, I feel like a lot of their marketing and sales motion has been organic. And I think a lot of it I would characterize as bottoms up. Yeah. Uh, it seems to me that the federation enables you to have a top-down messaging, Precisely. umbrella messaging and, 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 and marketing sort of motion. Yep. Yep. So what is that brand of the federation? What do you want the brand to stand for and how should we think about the umbrella messaging? Right, so, so since I just got to my new job <laughs> just two or three days ago, right, I'm working on that. That's exactly what I'm working on. I'm trying to figure this out, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you're right, it has been pretty organic because each individual building block has a design center and it's very important people understand what they can and cannot do with the building blocks. But you're right, there's so many building blocks now, we got to time together and create an overarching story. Mm -hmm. And if I have to give you a bit now, like two or three days into this thing, yeah, okay. right? Put you if on I have to give you, yeah, yeah, put me on the spot, that's fine. <laughs> that's okay, dude. Get used to it. No, yeah, get used <laughs> to it, right? right? Man up, okay? <laughs> I tell you, it's, it's very simple. All you have to do is focus away from the storage system and worry about what's on the storage system. It's all about the data, mm -hmm. right? The data, if you start thinking about what is the EMC Federation, what's the one thing that, that ties it all together? The compute, the retention, the protection, the actual refinement of what's going on with the data, right, with, with Pivotal. You start going, well wait a minute, this is all about being a data management company. That's what we're doing. And I might have a more refined answer for you when I've had a little chance to polish it, but that's really at the essence what it is. And I'll tell you one more little thing. There's not a stick of, a, you know, pallet of diapers that's moving in any supermarket unless there is a data entrance somewhere, mm -hmm. right? Data is, someone said it perfectly the other day, it says, man, everything is data. Yeah, and data is everything. Yeah, data centricity is going to be is, a message. It is, it is, it yeah. is. And that's precisely what ties the federation mm -hmm. together. Dennis, I'm wondering if I could pivot off that. Sure. Uh, can we talk about kind of the changing application models and how that's impacting, you know, oh, everything very good throughout question. the federation? Yes, yes. So, um, so I want to jump into what we, I think we have confused everybody by calling third platform, right? So what's third platform? It's really just been around us. It's been around us since Google started building their stuff. Right? And they sat around and said, we, we need to build a big data center here for our application. And then you know, Facebook came in and did the exact same thing, and eBay did the exact same thing. These are big, single applications. Now, I'm not trying to belittle what they do. There are a lot of little bits and pieces in their machine. It's a big machine that serves one constituency, right? That's, and then you start going, well, could they buy something from Microsoft that would do that? Or would Oracle have something off the shelf that they could install on a server? And the answer is no, they have to build it themselves. So, if you look at their operational model, right, there's a, there's a very important thing, and a lot of people, they don't see this, because they look at it from the top down, they don't look at it sometimes from their bottom up, and that helps a little bit to look at it from both sides. If you look at the actual hardware today, what's the big difference between where we have been in second platform and now what we call third platform? Well, let me take second platform first, so you know what that looked like, because that's actually really key to understanding the question you're asking, which is, what is the different models? Well, second platform was very simple. It had a web tier, and what was the thing we did like 10, 15 years ago on the web tier? We stacked pizza boxes, right? And what was inside a pizza box? One core, one CPU, right? And the only way to get scale was to buy more pizza, right? So what happened in the second level, is people typically had, that was the front of the shop, then there was an app tier where the servers got a little more expensive, a little more powerful, and what happened at the back of the shop, that was where you had the big database server. And then, in those days, EMC would come in with some metrics, and that'll be where the data landed and got protected behind that. So what you had was essentially a funnel effect, where everything coming in the front end goes through the back end, and the, and the back end is where data gets monetized, so to speak. Now, you take that whole thing and you say, well, what has changed between that model, which is the second platform, and the third platform we're talking about today? It turns out, the third platform we're talking about today is that whole thing mushed together like so, right? And then it's scaled horizontally. And why is that? Well, thanks to folks like Intel. Where you buy a socket, one single socket today has 12 cores of CPU, and it's very fast. 
right? So you can build systems now that are scaling in a horizontal compute layer, which of course means that underneath that has to be a horizontal data retention layer. Again, it's about the data, right? There are two pieces of the puzzle here. We, we keep the data from when you're ready to eat it, and, and we make sure it's protected, and then what you do is you obviously take it, chew on it, create value, and then whatever was that, that value was created needs to then be stored again. So what do we have, we're dealing with it's sort of like snakes and ladders, right? We have like, we have like com transformative compute engines, right? And we have retention layers underneath, and it's all networked together. But the difference is, it's not a three-step process anymore. It's actually a horizontal, scalable sea of compute, sea of data retention. And that means that we have to write the software differently to pull that off. Does that make sense? Was that a long answer to a short question or something? It, it was, no, but it was very useful. because okay. Absolutely, I mean, Moore's Law and you yeah. know, the software changing the way we do things, because you know, I've, I've got spare, capacity, spare, spare compute cycles, so there's much more I can do with it. That's um, right. It, it's the, these uh, you know, massive step functions when I have just so much available, because you know, I've now got hundreds of thousands of cores yes. uh, I can put in some of these environments, so it, 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 it does fundamentally That's right. change. That's right. uh, David Floyer, our CTO at Wikibon, always said, you know, when databases were originally built, you know, th there was just those physical limitations, so you architected it a certain way because otherwise you, you were just wasting code. That's right. Um, and and that's now, right. you know, we can fundamentally rewrite all of those applications, and, and that's that big transition. So, do, do I hear right, it sounds like you're, you're kind of stepping back a little bit from the, you know, pure taxonomy of second platform, third platform, what, 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 where, where, no, where, I, no, the, I don't uh, think, no, that would be too much to say I'm stepping back from it. I see it as a continuum. Okay. Right? It's, we are moving, we're moving. This is a classic case of what we've been doing in our business all the time. We move from paradigm to paradigm. There was a mainframe paradigm back in the day that was the bee's knees, right? And that has changed. There was a tape paradigm that was everything, right? That's how you did archive in the back. You, you don't do that anymore. Like for instance, on, on, on storage, disk, disk is, is the new tape, right? And, and flash is the new disk, right? Everybody's want to, you go to show here, everybody wants to have flash. So, all right, all right. so, so if I could jump yeah. in there, Dennis. So, <laughs> yeah. so in, in, in one way, and I agree it's a continuum, because of course, yeah. you know, mainframe's been replaced, but it's still, it's now a niche. Yeah, but it's um, still around though. And, and, and so usually we see kind of what's big today yeah. becomes the niche. So EMC has a lot of big pieces today. What yes. becomes niche and what becomes the new thing? Well, so if you look at it, and I need to put it in sort of a, if you look at it from an investor's perspective, right? I mean, we're running a business, and we are running business with a bunch of stuff that our customers are saying is valuable, right? And we're investing according to where customers vote with their feet. That's fair, right? So what, what we have different products that are different points of maturity. There's stuff that, that is actually, that coming, coming from a second platform needs to start changing to be relevant in the third platform. So you want one that blows your mind? I know we're running out of time, but one that really blows your mind? What we're hearing from all the folks that are doing third platform, that grew up in third platform, they're coming over knocking on the door at EMC and say, guys, do you have some shared storage for me? <laughs> and we're going, what, are you crazy? Shared storage in Hadoop? What's going on? And the answer really is, yeah, we want some of the operational efficiencies of scaling storage and servers independently of each other. So it's really interesting to see that what you are seeing, some people would say, well, it's the same old wine in new bottles. Right, it's really a evolution, right? You're seeing, like, this is, I mean, you can, you can argue that I had a terminal back in the day, right, for a mainframe. Well, isn't that what cloud computing is all about? Isn't that what VDI is all about to a certain extent? Do you really care anymore? <laughs> no, right? You just go, dude, I have a, I have a need. Click, so I got the answer, right? That's where we're at right now. And, and, and that's not, that's, that's a democratization, if you will, of compute. I mean, if you look at it, I mean, you saw what happened to Microsoft, right? Those cats, those cats were running around struggling a bit because they were st stuck in a PC paradigm. But they're changing now because the PC today, the personal computer is in your pocket, right? That's your smartphone. So, is that, that doesn't mean it's not a personal computer anymore. No, it just means it, it changed the form factor. They got smaller. And it did things when it didn't have a keyboard anymore. But do you, do you want to give up your laptop you have there? I, I'd be happy to give up my laptop. Would you really? Absolutely, <laughs> okay. sure. Maybe we um, can talk about that offline. Yeah, I, 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 I cloudify all my apps, I'm That's all right. good. So, but, but, uh, let me, but let me ask you a simple question, right? So things are, t things are changing all the time, right? This is what's so exciting about this business. Would you like a laptop that didn't have a flash drive in it? Yeah, no. No, all right, so we're done there, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so you see, so, but does that mean you don't have applications that all of a sudden don't work because you're running a flash drive? No, you can, you can argue that the killer app of NAND gates, the chips, where actually they could be implemented as an SSD, so they can be slid in underneath all the software, all the OS, all the stuff we already have created. Yep. So it's an evolution. I'm, I'm with you, Dennis. Okay, good. <laughs> so Dennis, I wonder, yes, sir. When, as you get into this, I know you're just a you know, very couple days in, Yeah. but I want to understand who the consumers are of your, your messages. Is it 
Is it a new, new class of, uh, of consumer? Is it the CIO, the, the CTO, the C CEO? Who are you trying to reach? Good question. So in the past, we would say that we were probably guilty of selling a lot to the storage admin, mm -hmm. the, whole, the whole army of folks that did storage, and we know, no one loved them, right? But because what we just talked about a minute ago, which is really the shifting towards data, and data, data flow equals business flow, what we find now is the consumer of what we're building is actually the business owner. Okay, so that's really ultimately who you're trying to reach. Oh, absolutely, okay. absolutely, no doubt about it. I mean, and, and, and the biggest challenge, frankly, is that you're, and you're big organizations, right? What are we now? We're like we're more than 66,000 people working for EMC, right? And you go, that's a pretty big shop, and getting all those guys to shift their behavior from, from being just, hey, I'm selling you a box, to, to saying, let's have a conversation around how we can help your business. That's the change we're in the middle of. Yeah. And, and, uh, and the good news is, I was just, before I ran over here, I just had a conversation with one of the very passionate people at EMC that said, man, we got, we got to get much better at this. So you're right, we are shifting the focus. We, we, we don't turn our back on the storage admin, I mean, of course not, right? But, but we are starting to broaden the conversation. And that's again because everything is data, and data is everything. Well, one of the things, um, and we've had Tom Clancy on a number yeah. of times in the queue, yeah. one of the things that I think you can help the storage admin do, because you've got such a strong relationship with so many, is help them in their careers, yes. you know, with the education and the right. training, uh, whether it's you know, data, whether it's cloud ops, cloud sure. brokerage, you guys sure. have, have excellent education in all of those. Yes, and we so do. I would, I would, you know, I'm always encouraging my storage admin friends, hey, time to update the skill set. Yeah, update you know, the skill set, man. Make more money. Yeah, <laughs> you know? and, and, and isn't it true for all of us, when we get outside our comfort zone, that's when we grow, yeah. that's when it's fun, that's when like, man, I'm doing new stuff, yeah. right? You get passionate about what you do, right? You're not doing the same old, same old, that's just boring. How are you going to measure success? How are you going to measure success? Yeah, how are by, you going to By having success? My, my success yeah. or EMC success? Your success though, in this new role. Oh, in this new role? Uh, that, we, that we have the ability to actually have that conversation and the way I would measure whether I'm effective or not and with all the people I'm going to be working with is that we continue to grow EMC revenue. Because mm. when, and I was trying to teach my kids this, so I have two teenagers, right? So I was saying, listen, value is all that matters, right? Going to, going to a late night TV and thinking you can make millions with some scheme it's not how it works, okay, in the real world, right? Let, 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 be, let the old man tell you, right? Yeah. Because what it really is about, you create value. What is value? Value is what you perceive it to be, right? It's not going, well, wait a minute, that sounds pretty esoteric. No, because you're actually exchanging money for what you perceive the value to be, mm -hmm. right? So if that's the case, then I, I must say, EMC's continuous financial success, yeah, that's what I'm after, right? And that's only because I'm providing value, we are all providing value to the end user to the business that use our gear to run and benefit their businesses. Mm. Dennis, hey, thanks hey, for Hey man, it was a pleasure. Thanks for giving me oh, the opportunity to chat with you all. all right, it's thanks, it's really cool. Thanks, man. All right, keep it right, right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from VMworld 2014. We'll be right back. <laughs>